Hey there, it's Mark with Mark's Astro Journey. In this video, I'm going to show you a comparison I did where I took my GEM28 uh, mount, used the built-in polar scope, the iPolar, and did polar alignment. And then afterwards, took Nina's polar alignment uh, tool and did the polar alignment. And then after that, I'm going to take SharpCap's polar line feature and cross-check what Nina did. So stay tuned and we can go through this and see how those different options compare and also kind of helps a person see how off the um, polar scope that might be built into your telescope's polar alignment could be where using one of these other utilities might be helpful to improve your polar alignment on your telescope rig. So let's get started with uh, the GEM28 and the built-in iOptron um, iPolar polar scope and its software and we'll do that alignment first. So when I carried out my telescope mount and everything and set up I basically aligned uh, physically the telescope oriented it towards um, an offset from True North that I usually use which is fairly close. And so once that's done um, here in iPolar I'll see that cross hatch in the center some stars you'll see in the background and then that red blinking dot. So the objective is to um, shift the telescope to align that red dot to where that cross hatch is at and then the red dot will get larger and we'll be able to do our fine adjustments to uh, get that uh, red dot centered on the cross hatch. Now most of you who've done this several times before as you're very well familiar, these adjustments, once you get this this close, are very fine adjustments. If you um, shift very much, adjust one way or the other, it's going to go way past uh, where you're trying to align that red dot to that crosshatch. So that's one thing that's um, early on you get more used to is make these real fine adjustments. And uh, it's, it's going to go past it and you're going to have to come back. It's just the nature of it. And sometimes the telescope weight may shift a little too. It may cause there may be a shift, or you may bump the telescope tripod. But uh, you can see just getting this green circle once it gets aligned to the crosshatch properly. Now I'm going to tighten down the mount now that it's locked in to the position. And usually that um, tightening down of those, either if you have some type of hand twist nuts or an allen wrench uh, type bolt. When you tighten those it usually shifts it off a little bit and then you require a little bit more adjustment just to bring it back um, to be aligned to that cross hatch again. And so here I'll make that fine tweaking adjustment and we'll have our iPolar alignment completed. Now here in Nina there are a couple settings that are important under your settings or options, this is, there's an astrometry section and that has your sight latitude and longitude and if you like you can also set elevation there. That's important because the um, polar alignment is going to use that information so you want that to be correct. One other setting you may have challenges with if you're like me, I'm colorblind. It's not a hundred percent but the default color scheme makes it hard to see the panels in the polar alignment. I had to change it to have more contrast for me to be able to see it. So that may be helpful if you're, you're colorblind and trying to use this tool in Nina. You're also going to want to have your telescope in focus. So if you're using an autofocuser, complete a routine with that. Or if you're manually focusing with a batten off mask. But the telescope is going to use your primary a camera to do this routine so you want to have your focus already sharpened. I already have the panel opened but if you've not opened it at the top right under tools you'll see a link to the three-point polar alignment and when you click on that it'll open it in the imaging section. And of course if you've not already done so you'll need to install the plugin for the three-point polar alignment in Nina before you'll be able to use it. And since the three-point polar alignment has a dependency on plate solving, you'll need to have an applicable plate solving software configured in Nina as well. You'll see here in the center of the screen for the three-point polar alignment, 
you're given various options if you want to adjust and take more control over how it's performed. I've already positioned my telescope at zero position and I'm going to basically use the defaults and kick it off. So Nina is automatically going to reposition the mount. It's going to take a series of images. It's going to use those images to calculate how far off or how accurate your polar alignment is and then give you recommendations in the total error and of course it'll break it down by azimuth and altitude so that you know um, how to make the adjustments um, up or down or east or west. So let's advance past that waiting. So here we can see the result I got back. Um, azimuth is off 11 arc minutes and the altitude is less than one arc minute off. So it gives the total under total error. <clears throat> and also you'll notice it gives you the indication move up to correct altitude and move right or east to correct azimuth. So I'll need to uh, make an adjustment. I'm not going to mess with altitude that is so close it's under one arc minute. Um, a person could if they wanted to try to get it down to zero all the way. And then we'll see how the adjustment affects it. So kind of it's easy to get this backwards if you're turned around or the, how you're looking at your telescope. So you're trying to shift your telescope right or east and this will hopefully bring back in or lower amount on the azimuth error. So I'll advance forward and not make you wait through that. So here we can see our result. It came down a little bit, the azimuth error. I didn't move it much because it's easy to um, go too far. So I'll make another adjustment to azimuth moving east again to see if I can improve the azimuth error. Again, let's advance this forward so we don't have to wait. Okay, and as it's taken um, some more images to see what improvement I've made, you can see it came down to 6.28. So I have to make another adjustment and bring that closer in. I'm trying to get to one or less arc minute around their azimuth. And we'll speed through this and move forward. Okay, so we're making good progress. We're down to two arc minutes and 59 seconds. So we'll make another slight adjustment, hopefully get really close. And advancing this forward again. So I'm pretty happy with this outcome. Um, it's less than an arc minute on both azimuth and altitude and I don't really want to try to tweak beyond that myself. I guess a person could spend a long time trying to get down to all zeros, but I'm pretty comfortable with this level of accuracy. So now that we've done our polar alignment with Nina, won't it be interesting to cross-check that with SharpCap? So under Tools, we'll open the polar line option, and we'll run a polar line to see how accurate the results were in Nina, or I uh, guess we could also say how they compare because we may not have, aside from doing a drift align, a way to 100% be sure which one is more accurate. So here in the polar line dialog, I'll click next to kick this off and we'll let it work and we'll see what kind of results it comes back with. And again, I won't make you wait, I'll advance this forward. And of course, uh, once the result comes back, SharpCap's polar line has its own routine. It's setting us up to go through that routine where we do our rotation and adjustments, right? So I'll move around in these dialogs and show the actual results so we can see, even without making any adjustments, how does SharpCap's measurement compare? So I brought back on the right-hand side the screenshot from Nina. So it wants us to move right 0.05 arc seconds in sharp cap and in Nina 0.24 arc seconds and moving up 0.51 in Nina and telling us to move up uh, 1 minute and 27 seconds in sharp cap. So they're different but fairly close. Well I thought that was a really interesting comparison. I have to make a confession. I was primarily using the iPolar polar scope and I was ex being satisfied that that was a sufficient polar alignment and uh, I think after using these tools a little bit I can see how probably for many telescope mounts I don't know 
may just be this one, but that polar scope may not give a super accurate polar alignment. It's pretty close. And to improve the polar alignment, um, having a utility like the one provided by Nina or SharpCap is pretty handy. And I also found it interesting that the outcome was similar when I cross-checked after doing that um, polar line with you know Nina's tool and then running that with SharpCap. So I found this to be an interesting exercise. I would like to hear back from other people. Um, please leave a comment like if you feel like one of the utilities is better or maybe the utilities work better with certain mounts or just what your experience is with polar alignment and whether or not you use anything beyond your polar scope. Do you always align with one of these utilities or do you just accept um, what your polar scope uh, provides and whatever software you use with that? So it'd be interesting to hear people's comments. It's always very educational to hear what other people's experience is and what they like to use and how they've seen the utilities work. So to wrap up the video, I recently did a session on the Elephant Trunk Nebula and I also did a session on the Pelican Nebula. And I did those uh, with narrowband and also processed them um, using show um, color scheme. So I'll share those with you. Let me know what you think. Uh, I think they turned out halfway decent. Um, for both of those, I think I spent something like, or I, I captured something like, uh, I think for Pelican, it was something like six hours of data. And for Elephant Trunk Nebula, I think I might have captured something more like eight to nine hours of data. So take a look at those images. Wishing you clear skies.